600 Mark II. I had to say it like 300 times to remember. What are these? What are these passive bookshelves, Zeos? And what is that black logo with the picture of a swan on it? Swan! He darted back, exclaiming. He knew it was impossible. Swan does not make passive speakers. Yes, they do! You're looking at them. These were purchased after I had had the M200 Mark III's for a while. Had them for a while. And I love them. As I've said in the review of that, which has probably come out before this, they're my favorite speaker as an overall simplicity, beauty, sound, how they work. Oh, not the best speaker. They're lacking some capabilities, but fuck, oh, they're, the, they're, my, they're my favorite speaker. And this is one of those examples of making like a world-class car and then everything else in the range all of a sudden looks great. Put a swan logo on something, put a swan logo on a pile of shit, and I'll buy it. Now these are not a pile of shit. These do not cost me $5. These are the RM600 Mark IIs. And yes, they are right side up right now. Because it's a bottom tweeter, front firing five and a quarter and what I didn't know is it's in a sealed box there's no port there's no port anywhere and they're a tiny little speed they're a they're a, they're probably the smallest smaller than the Kef Q100s they're smaller than the Fluon signatures these are tiny they're like and they're Art Deco like really like just are we looking at a square box you got this lipped brim that comes out that's also slightly curved you've got silver around the driver silver around the tweeter which we'll get to the tweeter then you've got this show me what you got head metal full metal with fabric over it cover swan logo these I like I remember the 90s, and I remember things like this would have been in a hi-fi magazine in the 90s. Look at it. Look at it. It just screams Manhattan and money. It's just, ah. Uh, it's just, ah. Uh, it's just, ah. Uh. And then I saw them online, and I was looking at them for, I had these in my shopping cart for probably five months. And one day on a live stream on Twitch, link in the description for that. I just, just, I was like, you know, these have been in my cart, and I love those swans, so, you know, a passive version, a passive version of those, and these are not that. They're not that. And they cost me over $400 for the pair of the Patreon money, so if you want to support on Patreon and support me buying things randomly without doing any research, there you go. What are these speakers? What are you? What the fuck are you? Your light. Look at this. Look at this base. Look at this base. It's like out of a 90s Pioneer Sharper Image catalog. It's craziness. These speakers are that tweeter. I don't know if it's going to come out on camera, but that tweeter sticks out further than any tweeter I've seen. It's nearly 40% of a circle, of a, of a sphere, not a circle. It sticks out, and yet it's recessed in this very sharp uh, 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 waveguide. The speaker here is also recessed in a waveguide. It's a short one, but it's a waveguide. Uh, I'm tempted just to leave the covers on, because they look so damn... I just love the shape of it. I love how, how it went. It feels like this was designed in a, in a simpler time, when speakers could be crazy. And I didn't know they were sealed until they arrived. I got the box, I took them out of the box, and I went, 
Oh, is this, oh where's the low end? Aha! Aha! There is no low end. Not none low end, but there's not enough low end to say, okay, you don't ever ever use a sub with these. I've got the subs on. Both Martin Logan Dynamo 300s are running with these speakers. It's sort of a requirement. Especially running them in a room like this. If I'm running them on a desk, like I was running them for a couple weeks actually, off of the Freya Vidar combo, um, yeah, I kind of wanted them on a sub of my desk as well. But, tweeter on the bottom, Zeos buys it. Swan Zeos but These had seven or eight like mental notes in my mind that were saying, buy it, Zeos. You gotta know. Don't you gotta know? There's not even any reviews on Amazon. Not a single Amazon. Re no reviews. You gotta know. And now I know. I was very disappointed in these speakers when I first took them out. I took them out and I said, oh, they don't have any low end. Who's going to want to buy speakers that need a subwoofer? And then I sort of got over that. It took me a couple weeks. But all right, I'll put them up in the stands and I'll... I hadn't hooked up my Doom Stacks properly, like with an actual subwoofer and splitting the, the, the use. And I'm like, all right, fine, we'll hook it up and we'll hit fucking play and... <laughs> Caravan Palace, Maniac, good song, Maniac, because I was disappointed with these speakers right into the point where I filled in the low end, and I was either using, actually it might have been that at the time, or this, I could kick on and put this in as the point one, I set the crossover frequency about 80 hertz on the receiver, and holy shit, now that I'm not distracted by their lack of low end, what's everything else, because low end as far as the speaker is concerned, it's like 100 hertz and below. So that's, that's this much. And 100 hertz to 20,000, which is a much larger area, that's what we should be concerning ourselves with. And these kick ass. Um, how do I put this? Vocal clarity. There they are. If you can get a center channel that sounds like this, and you can't, unless you buy a pair and put one in the center, that would be all that was sold. Because the benefits of a sealed box versus a ported box. I'm sure I've gone over it. Let's go over it again. When you close a box off, you restrict this driver. Tweeter's going to do its thing. It's, it's sealed already. It doesn't re interact with the box. This interacts with the box. So when you have a port, that driver moves in and out, and the port shuffs in and out air, and you get low end. When you seal a box, and I've only done a couple of sealed speakers, honestly, in the life of this channel. MT-110s, those giant motherfuckers from uh, PSA Audio, those were sealed. The Dayton B-62s are sealed. The Modhouse Cubes are sealed. Uh, are the Canto Benz sealed? I think they're sealed also. Just a handful of speakers have had the balls to go sealed. The benefit again, once you restrict the air, like the, the designers now know when this speaker goes in, it's just gonna compress the air that's in the box. And when it goes out, it's gonna try to expand the air in the box. It's very controlled. You get no low end. To, to make low end in a sealed enclosure requires, well, that. That's what's required. You need all of this and all of that, and then you can make low end with a sealed enclosure. These being sealed and tiny, they're approaching a different sort of level. They wanted super, super accurate movement of this. They didn't give a fuck what they were sacrificing for. And they were sacrificing. Because if you just hook these up and you don't, and people don't understand, they're gonna be like, well, it's got no low end, where's the next pair of speakers? So I put the subwoofers on, and in the sound demo, which I did a couple weeks ago, because I was just in a roll doing sound demos, I do turn on a sub, I believe, in that. I haven't rewatched it. And I believe you should judge these speakers either with the full knowledge 
that okay, they're not gonna have enough low end to satisfy, at least on most modern music. If all you do is classical, and these look like fancy 90s classic music champagne, the days before Crystal was invented. That's what these speakers look like. God, they're so art, art deco is the only, only word. I studied architecture for a while, and I know exactly what, like, like the colors and the black and the gray. The sharper image, these are the sharper image speakers. And I love them, but here's why. I think the word that comes to mind is clear. Just, they're fucking clear. Like all you need to hear, these are basically, people always ask me this question and I fucking hate it. And if you're one of the people who asked me and I answered you, just know that I did it under protest of my own soul. I have these headphones and I want speakers that sound like them. Or I have these speakers and I want headphones that sound like them. Do you know how fucking impossible that is to like comprehend? That's like I have this air conditioner and I want a refrigerator that cools as well as this particular air conditioner. What? Exactly. But I'm gonna go, I'm gonna break my own rules and I'm gonna say that these speakers are the AD2000Xs of speakers. My Audio Technicas, my babies, the my just, oof. They sit on that wall, and I know they don't do low end. I know they don't do low end. But they image and have highs and female vocals, and I pull them off the wall, and I know exactly what I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get vocal clarity, imaging, highs that go way up, way the fuck up, and then stop. And it's so good. It's like when a girl's burning a candle with wax, and she's putting it right by her ass crack, but she never goes in the crack. It's right there. Let Perv. Split of the Brute. Now, we've got some subwoofer action going on, and I could shut those off for this review, but it's gonna be sad. I'd like you to know that I've stepped back, way, way back in my living room. One of the benefits also of having a sealed box is not only do you get to control exactly through precision how much this can move in and out, because it, it, it can't move out further, is that it can handle a little bit more intense volume. Because you could throw power at it, and I've had to adjust the amps, and I'm currently using the um, Freya Pre in tube mode to just, actually I'm in, and I'm in full tube mode, just to sort of get, get it up. They get so fucking loud. If I'm talking normally like this, and I unplug, and then I hit the volume button, I get to be so loud. trying to kill themselves in my big living room. And they're not big speakers. And they're not big speakers, and they're just going, ah, listen to my clarity. And I am. I'm currently listening to their clarity. They need a low end. I wish those subs were back on. But as far as every little, little nuanced sound, it's getting shot in all directions by this crazy ass tweeter. And then that mid range is coming. I would love to see frequency response graphs of this, even though I hate frequency response graphs. But I'm pretty sure it would go no bass, fucking flat. Then maybe just, just a hint more treble than normal. Just, mmm, mmm. Whereas I just took this, the uh, C103s off the stands a couple hours ago and put these on. These definitely have more coming out of those tweeters. <laughs> There's bells, there's bells like happening right there that they fucking sound like bells. It's not like, oh, there's a bell playing that speaker. It sounds like a legit fucking bell is ringing in my room. You know, because 
you can almost always, in fact, that might be a test I do in the future, where I get one of those little bells, and, ding, and I just record that with a crazy $20,000 microphone and play it back on the speaker and do it in real life behind a curtain. And if you can't tell the difference between the real life bell and the speaker playing the bell, that speaker wins. And these speakers would fucking excel at that. That's very shittily recorded, by the way, and this is from the Deadpool soundtrack. That's Neil Sedaka's uh, Calendar Girl. Let's move on. on the nope. There's Low End. This is a Juno Reactor song, so that was just trying to play like low, like over the subs on Low End. It sounds like Low End. You could hear that it's trying to make something happen. It's just. It fucking can't. It's restricted. There's no way for the air to inside there to, to make it go. It's not a 15 inch thousand watt. You know, that can make go low end. These just can't. I'm making up a lot of excuses for these speakers because they, they're gonna be a hard sell for many of you. If you're, oh, I have a desk, Zios, and I wanna put something on my desk. Q100s are these. It's gonna be the Q100. It's gonna be the cheaper speaker. It goes on your desk. It just does. These are only gonna work, they're all, they almost lend themselves to be perfect home theater speakers. Stop glitching out, touchpad. No, no, bad touchpad, dead. Oh my God, my mouse is doing a weird thing. This is Z reviews, we don't fuck around here. Actually we do, a lot. Are you dying? Well. We're gonna pray, pray for the for the gods to not ruin this too much. The only time these work, the only time these work is if you have a subwoofer, and it could be a point one sub and a and a five point one receiver, and you just have to tell the crossover and play them, and then you could sit there and go, "Oh, you're the only ones gonna be able to enjoy these." You either have to be a classical music nut, where it's just like. What do you listen to? And people give me a list of what they listen to, like that's gonna help me pick what speakers or headphones they want. Sometimes it doesn't, most times it doesn't really work. But if for some reason you say, I like fucking violins and I like cellos and I like trumpets. I only listen to those three instruments. What's the best speaker? Here. These. You listen to tuba. I just love tubas. You gotta go with something bigger. But, but fucking string instruments? <laughs> that sound, string plucking on guitars, what just happened there, this song, if you don't know LA Woman by The Doors, car rev, and then it moves slowly across, perfectly, perfectly moved across. Now The Doors, I'd like to also to add that um, they don't know what low end is, so if you listen to The Doors, you'll be absolutely fucking fun in these speakers. It's a, it's a fact. There's not a door song with low end anywhere. Ah! They're exactly 2,000. I finally figured it out. They're 2,000 X's. What if I point them in like that and I stand in the middle if, if they'll just be my headphones for me? Where am I looking? Where am I looking? All right, looking there, looking, looking there. Oh. I've never done this before. This is awesome. like the biggest headphones in the world. Beatles. And that's good. See that? See that? That's low enough. That's like a, like a big guitar. It's low enough for like a big guitar, a big acoustic guitar. You, you put on some heavy duty modern drums, something synth, it's not going to work. By the way, that's crazy how they're set up now. 
There are some speakers that tell you to crisscross like that, so let's give them a shot. A little more, a little more room. We're playing now. You come here for serious stuff? That's another thing I noticed, is that because that tweeter, like I could see the tweeter. I could still see the tweeter. I could still see the tweeter. I could still see the fucking tweeter. It sticks out so far. I could still see it. Where's the camera lens? So, they work like crazy wide. I just... Wait. No, come on. Wake up, wake up in the this is perfect. If you have the right music, these are perfect speakers. I'm pointing them right at me. The the highs. I get this flavor of like, oh god, are they too high? They're not. It's just that they're more revealing than most speakers. Even more revealing than like AMT speakers. Peppermint feels like what's up. This is a, this is the Zankyo No Terror soundtrack. This is just called 22. Right about now, the Funk Soul Brother. Check it out now, the Funk Soul Brother. So yeah, like I was saying, the best place for these. I used them on my desk. I was satisfied with them on my desk. Satisfied. But I have to be satisfied. I have to figure out if they work. Yes. Oh, these work. I'd use these on desk. Do they want to stuff? Yeah, they kind of do. They're too exp... The problem is they're too fucking exp... If these were $250, $300 a pair, all day, every day, buy them, add a sub. I paid like $460 for these. Well, the patrons paid like $460 for these. Join the Patreon, by the way. I'll show you what your money is actually doing. It's, it's, it's weeding out the good and the bad. These are not bad. I fucking love them for some things. For some things, I fucking love them. I put the subs on, and that becomes a whole speaker. And that becomes a whole speaker. And then you could do anything I want. Then then they're like, holy shit, listen, well, here, let's, let's do this. Let's do that. And let's set this to stereo. So now that bitch is on. And that bitch is going to fill in with the blanks. I think I have it set to like 60 or 65. Please don't blow up. Two more clicks for just music. Dude, I'm just getting that bump, bump, just, just that little bit of bass, just a little touch, a taste. And all of a sudden, I don't worry about these speakers not having any low end. Now it's just these speakers imaging amazingly. And holy shit, guitars. The Red Circle from the John Wick soundtrack. I mean, that's not hurting. <laughs> That's when these speakers work perfectly. Like, absolutely worth their cost to hear what they're doing at these sort of volumes, and it's not quiet in here, ladies and gentlemen. It's not quiet in here. And they're doing that. That tweeter is coming out and fucking my ears. Just... So... Are they handicapped? It's a design choice. It's they had to do it. The only way to make these speakers sound as good as they do for vocals and guitars and things that are very precise, mid-range, upper mid-range treble, is to make a sealed box, which means no bass. It's a brave, it's a bold move, Henry. Bold moves. The heat's on. If you're willing to take the chance that you have enough bass, and I'm using either the two Martin Logans. I got that Ultimax, I could use the goddamn Rhythmic, I could use these, these Infinities. I, I, any sub, bring out any sub, put them in line with these speakers and they're worth $500. I guarantee, they're small enough, 
they're pretty enough, you might even get away with how they look. Maybe, maybe the man in your life doesn't want big, ugly speakers, and you can get away with how these look. You can put the covers on them, and they look so sharp. They're beautiful. Swan makes beautiful speakers. And Swan makes beautiful sounding speakers. These are just... Mm. Redline OST. I just want to keep... I, here's what's happening right now. The sound demo on these is already done. This review is about to be done. I'm going to tell you to download the wallpaper of Faye, who is very hard to find modern, like, artwork of. Like, she's one of the most iconic characters in all of anime ever. And there's no Faye fucking fan art or anything. So that was a rare picture and I had to make it as a wallpaper. But uh, I'm gonna keep playing these, either with that sub, or with these subs, and with that tube, or maybe without that tube. And I'm just gonna keep playing them for about, I don't know, five more hours. Because I just... They do things that other speakers can't do, but other speakers can do things that these can't do, like low end on their own. But if you're willing to throw a subwoofer in line, fuck me, man. Just string quartet, nine inch nails. Fucking perfect. I can't, I can't. I have to convince you on the internet that this is okay. And it is okay. Wallpaper in the description. Links to these if they're still available, because God knows Swan is here or there, never there. In the description. I think they look great. I think they sound their price, once you get around the fact that they have no low end on their own. Link to the Patreon that bought them. You wanna go hang out with other people who are crazy. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, sound demo's down there too. And uh, I filmed that again, I said a couple weeks ago, so I don't know what's in it. But have fun. Be young, drink Pepsi, Coke is swill. I hate to bring that argument into this, but it has to be.